Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Saturday, June the 8th, 2019, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. We have as our guest channel, our wonderful channel, Jim Charles. So hi, Jim. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. Hi, everyone. We see a fan blowing on you, so it's like you've got a wind machine there with you. Oh, really? <laughs> you, you can, oh, yeah, it's, they put it on uh, rotating, whatever, oscillating. That's nice. I hope you stay cool. Okay, um, so <laughs> we're, I just, just to go through the announcements before we get started, um, why don't we start with Micheline, because Micheline has an announcement, and then we'll go to the uh, to the to the Ascension Workshop. But Micheline, go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, Jim is coming to Ottawa uh, outside the in a rural area called Embrun, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So this is in two weeks. Uh, the event is called Heart and Solstice. We have a Facebook page. You may, um, uh, you may check it out for more details, but there's going to be chanting, channeling with Jim all weekend, um, galactic energy healing certification, uh, morning yoga, meditation, raw vegan food, and singing bowls. And so it should be lots of fun. It'll be a heart-centered healing weekend. And um, we have a few spaces left. So please check out our Facebook page, um, Heart and Solstice. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Thank you so much. And then also coming up on the 8th of August is the 4th Ascension Workshop. And Jim, why don't you tell people about that? Yes, the um, workshop is from the 8th to the 12th, I believe. And people are coming a day early and going out home a day late, some of them. It's in a very nice hotel, the Finger Lakes Hotel. And um, it's going to be really wonderful. There's going to be a lot of different subjects from the last workshop. There's going to be chakra uh, training. There's going to be there. There's going to be the, some, some things the same. We're, we're going to go over galactic energy healing for, for those that haven't had it. And it'll be a refresher for some that do. We're going to do galactic sign language, at least a little bit of it. Whatever I can get down. We got a, a few of it, a few of it down, but we're waiting for more. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be magic training, white magic training and, and galactic languages. Uh, light languages. It's always a fantastic thing when the light languages come because uh, whether you realize it or not, they're praying for something somewhere. Even if it's not interpreted, they could be praying for you in ways that you can't pray for yourself. They could be praying for others in ways that they you have no idea what they need, and they do. So galactic light, uh, light languages are so important right now and i think that so many people are gathering them there's more people uh, uh being uh involved in light languages than ever before and i love it so and there's so many things happening there that's that are going to happen there will be a lot of fun i think we're going to have our bonfire either even and uh grindle will come to uh tell stories around the campfire and and it'll, it's just going to be a great time that's great. <laughs> so that's August 8th through the 12th. And you yeah. can find out the information on hukalo.org and you can click the link for the for the Ascension Workshop and you can sign up there. Um, so just before we get started, I just want to uh, introduce everybody that's in our room. We've got Alex. Uh, we have somebody's mic isn't muted. <laughs> we have Christine. We have David. We have Dawn. Um, who is that? That's Ava. I muted your mic. She's logged in twice. We have Ian, who's going to take over the announcing. Ishmael, uh, Jay, uh, Wendy, Laua, I can't say your name, I'm sorry. Micheline, Reinhardt. We have a full room. Celeste, Sheer, Stephanie, Trinity, and myself, and, and J-Lo. <coughs> Excuse me. So who do you have in your room? I have Angie, Barb, uh, oh, Erica. Erica, Jack, and Ray. Perfect. So um, who wants to do a blessing? I don't know who's going to do a blessing in our room. Who wants to do one? Wendy does. 
Who else? Micheline wants to do one. Anyone else? Amy wants to do one. Barb, are you doing one? Barb is doing Barb and Angie. Okay, we'll start with Micheline, and then we'll go to Wendy, and then we'll go to your room, and then Ian's going to take over. So I, because I'm about to choke to death. So <laughs> much love to you guys, and we'll uh, help you, Karen. Yeah, and after that, Ian can announce who was requested, and then I guess you can take it from there. So much love to you guys. I'll be watching here on the side, but I'm not able to really talk. So wonderful. Thank you, Karen. No problem. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Shosanomi kishisa kalashu. Anoma akasala mikishi. Asokala ano akoshi niki asola adonai. Ashosi akola ano kishisini akoshasalami. Ashosi akuna ekishiri akoshosari. Namaste. Yes. The energies of God grow closer and more powerful every day. Not that he has not been with you, but now more attention is paid to the situation. And he will be gathering and bringing through great miracles and wonders. Next. Okay, is Wendy next? Hi, Ian. Yes. Um, and I and Jim, since you mentioned that about light languages, I wanted to announce, too, that I started a new Wednesdays with Wendy on my Languages of Lights YouTube channel. It's a Google Hangout. It's open to the public. And we all share all forms of written, spoken, singing, toning. It's all about light languages. It's about e expressing how we express them and how we apply them in our daily lives um how they've affected us and so forth so i wanted to invite everybody to watch or participate um and i usually i put the google hangout link on my blog page on my languages of lights.com page for anybody who is welcome so thank you for mentioning that about light languages because it is really blossoming blossoming like a beautiful flower so mm -hmm. i agree Nishala kusa simela ndodi ala ulanga ya jaj ziena nzuzo bajinana zegala zian do jamaliana kitase sambaliando ki balundo re shara kiliaka seminani atoku urkusa seto imaliasha segola lambariana akorashe selia lako malasaka piaki shanase salakala Open your hearts, for there are messages from many parts of the universe coming to you. Not only the people that you want to hear from, but even people and species that you don't want to hear from will have great messages for this land, for this world, and for the future. Take heed that you do not ignore them because you think that they are not positive. They are coming through in a positive way and more aligned than they ever had before. Everything now is aligned. They are able to speak. Thank you for that. Um, Don, would you like to go next? Or was there someone else that also wanted to do a blessing? I can go next if you like. OK, go ahead, Don. To soul. Blessings. Yes. There are wonders that are coming. Barbara. And there are those that will be able to perceive them ahead of time. Listen carefully and let it resonate with you what is true and what is not. You must know that there are great things that are unexplained coming. And that energy is in the very near future. Barb? <laughs> Yeah, 
In this day and age, the weak will be lifted up and be put in places of strength, and the strong ones will suffer and fall. Because you must have the right thought process in order to continue. And some of those thought processes come from small places that are pure and wonderful. Others come are trying to be haughty and and self-affirming, but they will be shot down because it is a time to bring God forward and not thyself. Oturu a sarati, arati tiki shu a arata sa, u arata tish miata, urata ta asa arikata, mura ashashurata ka, imara kutu ta parekiti, marata ka sha amarika, hora tarata ka nandotu. Take heed. Many people will be healed in this time. And many people will have the energies as they feel them come upon them to strengthen them in their time of need. Yes, there are many things that are happening that make you feel weak and disconnected. But those times will be over shortly and you will be strengthened and your mission will be realigned and all things will come to pass as they are meant to be. Take heed, your time is just now coming and has not yet come. Great, thank you. And I believe that's all for the light languages unless anyone wants to jump in here last. Okay, I think I we can go ahead and um, continue then. Want- well, tell me who uh, has uh, what? What are the requests for the beings, please? I don't have those written down, believe it or not. Oh, I know uh, that we had a few Grindle, of them. Elijah Grindle, Michael, Michael, and Takur, Takur, and Buddha, and Raziel, Buddha. and Raziel. Who? Raziel. Raziel, lots of angels today. They're very active. The angels are very, very active these these days. Even the ones you don't hear about, Hezekiah, Raguel, Raziel, uh, Azrael, all these are, Jeremiah, all of these are becoming very active right now and uh, have been coming through channel sessions. So it's very interesting uh, that the angels are becoming much more active in this time period. All right. Anybody else in that list? Anybody else want to throw any other names into the list? Someone in the uh, YouTube asked for Heniel. H-A-N-I-E-L. Heniel is also an angel, archangel. And Jim, if there's anybody from the Pleiadians who are responsible for the ascension help on the earth if they want to come through the pleiadians are in charge of the ascension for the most part right. they, the pleiadians are in charge the orions were here first to do their work and set everything up for the ascension and now the pleiadians have taken over that uh that guard right so if any of them would come i would have a few questions them. All right. We'll see who comes through. I think Thank you. I'm not sure, but Elijah may come. He didn't tell me he was coming, but I have a feeling that he is. But okay. Much love and have a wonderful session, everyone. Thank you, Eve, Ian, for taking over. And thank you, Don, for the work you're doing too. All right. Everybody pray that this is a pure, wonderful session.
Greetings, I am Elijah. Good afternoon, Elijah, thank you. Hello and greetings to all of you. I want you to know something right away, and that is that I am here for everyone. If you want to talk to me, I will speak to you. But my message today is about the ascension symptoms that you are all feeling. This is a very rugged time. The grand solar minimum, along with the earth energies, the, the different storms and all kinds of disruptions with microwaves and the waves in the air, the phone waves and also uh, telephone waves. Uh, it, there's just so many, I can't even mention them all. But they all affect each human. Right now, I want to send healing and energy to all of you that are feeling these ascension uh, uh, feelings, that are sicknesses and tired and colds and flus. And these, these symptoms must go away so that you can react in a much greater way to the energies that are coming in. There are energies that are going to make themselves available to you on the solstice this year and around the solstice time. Great energies will be coming in and great energies will be helping you to heal and feel greater. I did want to tell you also that at the end of June, many of these great disruptive energies are going to start to calm down and you're going to start to feel a little better. But right now, many of you are going through a lot of things that are holding you back. Take heed that these are going to dissipate. The energies are going to come through and help you. Believe in the healing believe in the justice of you having gone through these ailments and give glory to God that probably they have helped you to stay a little calmer, a little bit more um, sedate so that you can do a little bit more meditation and praying. I hope that's what they have helped you to do. But now you are going to be coming out of them. They are going to be helping you to move forward. There is much to do to prepare for the coming of all the things that are coming. And I can't mention them all, and I don't want to mention them here. But I do want you to know that they are within your hearts. And I can see that you know what I'm talking about. My love goes out to you. My energy goes out to you. And the energy of God that is coming through at this time is with you. Accept it. Let it heal you. Let it be a part of who you are to move forward in a very positive way. Life is too short for you to be feeling all these negative feelings and all these illnesses. Take heed that it will be gone shortly. Much love to you and many blessings. Let the next one come. Hello, Elijah, it's Micheline. I will jump in. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I was bringing yes. something else through, but I heard you call. Yes, I've, I've jumped in, I apologize. It's just, I just found out that our friend Marlene, she's been part of Hukolo for many years now. She uh, has just gone through, um, uh, she, she's going through the morning of her son who passed, um, the night of Thursday and Friday. And I would like you, Elijah, to 
um, to give her a blessing. Absolutely. Thank this you. kind of pain is like no other. When you have a child and you lose the child, you are dumbfounded, you are in mourning, you feel un that it is unfair, you feel that it is not right. Why don't they take me instead of them? But God has a way of teaching lessons through this and strengthening your character and bringing messages through that would never come through otherwise. But he is in a good place. One moment. Tira kura shumzibata adunai kawa. Ini inge yawan daora tishibori inda asitia. Sura kashatakara duriamba. Yeta vota and zavi shunzikota. Nai hakuaya sa sanzi vajundu. Aneatandu vuti yashim viata. Sikita. Ushundivaziata and the voriata. Indikiti. Kura. Kura. Inote vundivizia. Anikura. Mashanzi vuti tara anzi. May she be, may the family be blessed. I know the mother is mourning very deeply, and God is with her. Life is so fragile and sometimes very misunderstood. May your love, all of you pray for this family. May you, they feel your love and mine and the love of God and fellowship with the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit wants to calm and direct. Breathe deep and mourn the loss but after, thank God that you had that child for as long as you did. I know that doesn't sound like something that would be kind to say, but it is true that you will enjoy the memories of having this particular human in your life, this particular close soul in your life. Enjoy those memories when you can. Much love. Thank you, Elijah. The angels need representation. There are many of them here today. I am Raznia. Hello, Raznia. Thank you and welcome to our group this morning. There are some of you out there that know me very well and know all of us as archangels very well. We are at a time when our information is needed, our inclusion and intercession is needed on the earth. This is a time when angels will be more active than any other time in past history or maybe even in future history, depending on all the decisions that are made. I know there must be some questions. And that is what I'm here to do. I'm here to answer the questions for you. But first, let me give you the message of the angels right now. We are here to help you heal. We are here to uplift you. We are here to answer 
for your needs. We are here to bring messages that cannot be given by anyone else except us through God, because this is one of the ways that people, humanity, will listen to the word of God in a different way, in a different understanding than they can possibly listen to in any other way. You will be enlightened, you will be loved, and you will be encouraged. Who has a question? Uh, it looks like first question comes from JLo. Yes. Speak. Uh, Seth says she preferred to type it, so I'll go ahead and read it for her. <clears throat> it says that she had a, ch a dream where she was being chased by dogs and had additional dream today with a wolf. Can this please be interpreted? All right. Well, anyway, the they are the enemy to her and in, in these particular dreams. The wolves, the dogs, the uh, four-footed beings that are ferocious. She feels like she is being attacked at times in her dream life, and she would write rather not have that. These particular animals are telling me that they want her to stop doing a certain thing that she is doing. It's some kind of a warning and some kind of a threat. Is there something in your life that you are working on getting rid of or relieving that is difficult for you? That is possibly what this is about. Thank you for that. Um, we do have a, a series of questions. Uh, the next yeah. question will come from Catherine. Catherine. Greetings, Raziel. How yes. are you? Very well. And yourself? Doing very well as well. Thank you. And I know you very well. Thank you, as I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I had a dream the other night that I feel might be pertinent for the room. Uh, it was an announcement by God to the minds of all who dwell on and in earth, announcing that something in God is stirring. And I thought, if it is time, can you please expand upon that and it's uh, how it will affect us here? Thank you. Yes. Be blessed. Oh, a very a wonderful dream from God. And I can tell you exactly what that means. Right now, you see that Elijah is on earth, Jesus is on earth, and there are many others that are uh, going to rise up to speak for God on this planet. This is a time when the ascension is at a full swing. Uh, it will go for many years from now on because it will take some time for you to rise. Many predict that time. But only God knows when that time will be. But the stirrings of God in this era are strong and widespread. And he will have his people arise and speak so that they may help others to understand that what they believe may not be the truth. What they believe has been diluted or many things have been added to it so that they cannot truly see the face of God, but that they are looking at um, something that has been jaded. That will be pulled apart. The churches will have to make um, amends for what they have done wrong. For they have not spoken all the truth. The greatest gift of God is love. And that is not the greatest message that comes through. In most cases. There are some that still preach the greatest gift is love and is God. But then they do other things to water it down. You will have to look at the face of God and know the truth. 
This is a time when your ears should be open and your mouth should be closed because you do not know the truth until you hear it. Resonate with the truth and you will be saved. Amen. Thank you. Blessings to all. Blessings. There is a question in the room. Can we do that? Sure. This just piggybacks exactly what you just said. How are the people going to receive this information? How is this information going to get out? How soon is this going to happen? I mean, because we are in a time now where many minds are awake, many, many thought processes are changing, and I'm wondering if you could share with us how some of that's going to I just said, many will rise up and speak the truth. There has to be many voices, be not just one, because one voice not everyone will hear, because it will be in one language and not in all languages. But it will be interpreted into others, but there will be people from other languages that will rise up and tell the truth about what is happening. And this is the day and the age for that. You will see people rise up to speak about the truth and where the, the clarity of God has been diluted. And that is happening already in some ways. Listen to my voice. I am one of those that have, are speaking the truth of God. And so it has begun. How soon? Now, continue. Okay, our next question comes from Sheer. Yes. Greetings, Razia. How are you? I am well. And greetings to you. I want to ask you several questions. Uh, first of all, I'm entering my final exams and uh, any assistance will be much appreciated. You've already been promised assistance. More assistance would be too much. Well, uh, considering the test that I'm going to have, there's no such thing as too much assistance. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, also, uh, I you will do well. You will do well, my friend, because you are concerned. The Spirit of God is with you. And you need uh, no more protection than what is with you. But I will come and add my energy to that realm. Thank you. Um, also, I've been reading a bit about you. And it seems that I also have a book, the Book of Raziel. Yes. And it says that you are the keeper of secrets because you sit next to the throne of God and that you had um, several um, instances in the Bible where you came to Adam and Eve and Enoch and uh, Noah. Can you maybe um, expand on those uh, events, if it's possible, and about your book? Well, first of all, yes, I've, I've come many times into the earthly realm to say things to many different people. And um, some of them that you have mentioned are uh, not exactly accurate. But the thing is, the history of uh, the, the God life, light, the God light, is not as accurately recorded as it should be. However, I have made, I did speak to Enoch, yes, and I did uh, speak to others, but my words and my secrets are going to be revealed eventually. And that is why I'm speaking here today, is because my life, will be revealed dharma the secrets that i hold will be revealed because they have to be in this day and age but not all at once 
Okay, thank you very much and thank you for coming. You are welcome. <clears throat> Okay, I believe I'm next, um, Raziel. My name is Safira. Yes. So, <laughs> too many questions. I can't ask them all. But I would like to understand about the book of Revelations. How accurate is it? Um, is it something, well, for example, are many booming sounds heard around the world? in different cities and soundings like trumpets. And these are reported and some feel they are the different seals mentioned in Revelations. So if Revelations is accurate or, or a large percent of it, um, it where- It is accurate, but it is misunderstood. It is not, um, it is not de deciphered correctly, but go ahead. I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, but so where where is the where is humanity right now in terms of revelations? What stage are we in? Well, and, yes. If you see that there are many angels coming into um, the into your understanding at this time, then you'll know that the seals are starting to be opened, and they are starting to be prepare for those things that are in the revelation that cannot actually be interpreted properly. But yes, you will hear many trumpets, but the true trumpet will here be heard around the world all at once. Oh, okay. And excuse me, there is a popular prediction connected to the end of times as we know them, that the apocalypse will not happen until in Israel there is a war for the temple, which is believed to belong to both the Muslim and the Israeli people, and there will be a big war. And then after that, the whole world will concentrate on Israel, and then Jesus will come. This is a popular, um, I don't know the word, I guess prediction that this is part of the end times. Well, and it's a part of the, an interpretation from many different books that exist. And mm -hmm. there is not just the Bible, but there are other books that predict um, different things that will happen within this small Jerusalem area. And because it is inhabited and it because it is such a high energy vortex in this area there will be many that want to be with it and that will cause uh, a lack of that will cause them to want it more than to love one another you see this this area should be shared with the world it shouldn't be one religion or another it should be all religions that that come together to share this kind of energy, share this kind of worship, worshiping place, this very high regarded place. It's not just for one different religion, it's for all of them. And until that is noted and done, there will be war. Well, since these two brothers have been um, fighting for centuries, what is the solution? to bring peace to that area from your angelic point of view? I don't think there will be peace in this area until they learn what, how to love one another. And that right now is not something that I see happening very soon. Well, aside from some extraterrestrial races working with some governmental people for influence, are there specific angels assigned to other? Um, is it just the ETs working that, or are there angels yeah, working? Of course there's angels assigned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's angels, there's aliens, there's spirits. Uh, God is paying very close attention because the signs are saying that there will be something there 
that is unpleasant. I won't say what that means. Okay. I will stop now and let somebody else. Thank you very much. Of course there are angels watching, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and next we have David. Hello, Razia. Greetings. Greetings. So good to speak with you. I haven't, I don't think I've spoken to you before, have I? I don't think so. Okay, well, this is beautiful. So I'm really happy lately. I'm now aware of these gifts of light language and been speaking it. And I'm interested in your any kind of guidance um, about you know, different things that I may not be aware of that I can do with it. I've had a lot of good feedback from people feeling energy and having activations in Egypt and just all sorts of wonderful things. Yes, listen carefully. Light languages do many, many things. They're not there to just sound pretty and for you to just speak them at any time. They have purpose and meaning. They have a they have a time and a place. They are appropriate or they can be inappropriate, but they do many wonderful things. They pray for those that are sick, that you do not even know that are sick. And they pray for people in ways that you do not know that they need prayer. They pray for you in ways that you cannot pray for yourself. And they pray for healing around the world. They pray for peace around the world. They pray for alien species that are negative to become positive. They pray for all beings everywhere. They are a language that can sometimes not tell you what they are saying because you would never understand it. And that is why they are there. They are there to pray for the ascension in ways that no one can pray for the ascension. You do not know how to pray properly sometimes, but your light language does. Your light language can speak a great and heartfelt message that you could never speak in your language. You could never say the words that you are saying through this light language because they are too far ahead of you or too high above you. Love your light language. Let it heal you. Let it heal others. Let it make its activations. It is appropriate for meetings like this, but be careful not to turn people off with it by just saying it in the middle of a crowd or saying it where people do not understand what is happening. You can actually use it improperly. So make sure you do the right things. Much love to you. And thank you for that question because I think many people that have light languages often wonder why they're speaking it. And the answer to that is, it may be helping them pray for themselves or somebody in their family that they cannot know what is wrong and cannot know exactly what to say. But the light language will know exactly what you need and what they need and say it in the best way for it to be blessed and for it to happen. May I say a little blessing right now with it? That's not necessary. Okay. Can I, that, I wanted to ask about my back then. I had something happen. Did I, I laid down on my back. Did I fix where the bone was out of place? Yes, Can you you're fine. Actually, I'll just send you the energy and you will be fine. Thank you for your question. Please. Thank you. Much love. Okay, next we have a question from Lahu Ah. Wonderful. 
please speak. She may not be able to speak and might have to read her question. In that case, we're going to move on to some YouTube questions that we have right now from that Don will ask. Yes, very good. <clears throat> okay, the questions I've got, I just have to find them again. Oh. Okay, Lilypad asks, uh, what about what about my dream of lots of big snakes uh, trying to speak? Snakes that are trying to speak may be several different things. Um, they could be the Naga trying to communicate with you. You may have, uh, you are a person that has many angels around you. And so when the Naga appear to you, they are trying to tell you that they are friendly and that they are not, not to fear them. But there are also other snakes that you should fear because the messages they're trying to give you are not appropriate. But listen to the angels. You are close to many angels, and they are with you always, and you are well protected. So do not mind these snakes. There can be different kinds that will speak, but do not take it for granted that all snakes are bad. There are some good ones as well. Thank you. Another question is from um, uh, Raziel speak about the currently dependent belief sets that affects um, on of this variety on, on ascension. I don't really quite understand that. that. Can you reread that, please? Okay. Would Raziel speak about culturally dependent belief sets and the effects of this variety on ascension? Yes, I think I understand the question. There are certain cultures that have certain beliefs, and they, some of these beliefs are not um, in, a, in alignment with God's teaching or God's understanding. And so, yes, they will be spoken to. They will hear these, all the different things that God has to say through television, through different uh, places on their planet, they will hear of these things and be interested in these things. And some of them will actually hear the truth coming through. It, God will give everyone the opportunity to hear the real truth and an opportunity to accept it. So these cultural sets, as they are called, and cultural areas with their certain beliefs will have an opportunity to hear the absolute truth. If they can accept it, they will. it will be for the benefit of all. Thank you. Um, and Jess M has a question. She says that, uh, what is my connection to Archangel Raziel and what messages do you have for me about the incarnation, about my incarnation purpose here? Much love. We have a connection through many, many different lifetimes. You've always been someone close to me. In this lifetime, you are trying to find yourself. You must do that on your own to some extent, because if I, if I were to tell you what you're supposed to do, you're just going to think that's going to happen. But you must work to find the things that you are doing on this planet. You must work to find your missions, because if you do not work for your to find your missions, then how are you going to do them well? Your highest excitement, listen to this very carefully, your highest excitement has something to do with your mission. When I talk about highest excitement, I mean things that you love to do. Do you like to speak? Do you like to write? Do you like to heal? Do you like, what is it that you are wanting? Do you want to channel? Do you want to be an empath and take the pain from people? What is the, your greatest excitement? That has something to do with your mission. And that I can tell you. Okay, and thank you very much for that. Okay, the next question, I will be the last one right now. Uh, Richard Ding I, says, I heard Jesus was in a human body 
uh, of a young man living in Asia at this moment. Uh, uh, is he known to the public, a political figure? More, do you, more details, please. Thank you. Jesus is alive, but he is not in Asia. But he is alive, and he is on the world, is in the world. And he is not known to the to the public, but there are a certain few, a certain few that know exactly who he is and when he will come forward in some way. They know who he is and they accept him as being Jesus. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we can go with the next person. I have one more thing to say about the okay. lady. The one that asked about the cultural uh, sets. Within that cultural set, within every one of the cultural sets that are in the world right now, there will be at least one of their people that will rise up within that group with the, with the words of the true God and will speak to his people, his culture, in the, or she, could be a female, that will speak the truth about God within their own cultures. That will happen. Okay, thank any you. Other, any other questions? Sure, we have several questions waiting. The next question is from Christine. Greetings and blessings. Yes. Um, Rysel, I was um, thinking of um, how God doesn't just express it, express itself in just um, people speaking of love, but also in the creations that they come with. Like, okay. I was thinking of all these wonderful, beautiful children who are coming up with these inventions and who are cleaning up beaches on their own or yeah. um, doing these these actions of love, starting schools in the middle of nowhere, or creating ways to get water to dry areas and things like that. To me, that's part of the ascension. It my, is. My, God, my is own raising, God is raising them up with that love, with that creativity. God is full of creativity. He's the one that created you and put all creativity in every human, and he has activated their caring and love for the world. You see, many just have love for their brothers and sisters and families, but there he's raising up people that have love for the entire world, for the entire population, and this is what's necessary for the ascension to, to arrive in a, in a most wonderful way for all of us to be involved in the world, not just within our own little realm, our own little space, but to be involved in giving to the world, healing, love, understanding. The creativity that you're speaking of speaks volumes and is a great example to the world. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. And, and it speaks of love. Because you do yeah. not do these things arbitrarily. But if you have an idea that to start schools, that's not an arbitrary idea. That's a, an idea out of love and concern. You don't want to start a school just because it's going to make money for you. I don't think that's the reason. You want to start a school so that your children can learn and prosper and be greater. And that is out of the love and caring of your heart. Yes. So we can all rejoice every time we hear a good deed done or- um, Absolutely. Something. It's just, there's so much joy in the world. I think that we're only paying attention sometimes to the negative and we bypass the joy that really is bubbling up like crazy. Yes, many people are focused on the negative. They feel that they have to know the negative in order to survive. But yes. you have to know the positive in order to survive because the negative is not telling you the truth. 
the negative is lying to you and bringing forth what you they want you to they want you to know about them but they're keeping their secrets hidden know the truth and so when they try to attack you have the light on your side and not you're just trying to figure out what they're doing you're never going to do it you will never know their true agenda that's true thank you Russell. hi next yes. we have for our question is ava uh, blessings um i have a a personal um i don't know question if i can call it a question but um in general my family is doing amazingly lovely right now as it seems like we entered the phase of truly following our missions but yesterday um we find out that our beloved dog mishka is has terminal cancer he has few months left with us and um, I don't understand why um, he's leaving I think I do. but I would love to ask for intervention so he wouldn't suffer because he's been giving us love for 10 years and um, we will make sure that your dog does not suffer thank you so much thank you and I can do that for others. Uh, there's a question in the room, but I can do that for others as well. Thank you. It's all right if this person speaks in the room. But no, I will be with you, my dear. I will be with you. Thank you so much. I love you. And I know that your daughter loves this dog very much as well. Thank you. Next, we have Safira. Hello again, Raziel. I have two, thank you. I have two very different questions. One is about the 5G energy being promoted on the earth right now. I'm not sure if you know how that works, but from, from where you are, but there's a lot of controversy. It causes a lot of illness or it helps us with our consciousness. There's been so many different and many questions on this as well on different webinars. So. Uh, I would just like to know your understanding of it. It is not a good thing. The 5G energy is not good. It will eventually be good, uh, perhaps for you, the development of your brain, but not right now. And I ask for protection from it wherever you are. Okay, thank you. It is my, my other... that it is not good, yes. Okay, thank you very much. My other question is very different. Um, I keep, it keeps coming back to me where Jesus said, uh, if he said it, that's my question, that nobody comes to the Father but by me. So did he say that? And if so, what did he mean by it? And um, yeah, I don't understand like this. It's either yeah. like it's yeah. either Jesus or it's the aliens. It's, it's very difficult for people to know where to go, <laughs> you know. Jesus. Yeah. She, Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Nobody comes to God as much as when somebody leads them to God. So he was trying to tell them at that particular moment, if you're trying to get to God, come to me. Because I'm the one that is trying to tell you on this in this plane and at this time who god really is so i have the information that you need so this is what he was trying to say he wasn't saying that he's exclusively the only one that can bring you to god because is it not true that god can bring you to god he is all powerful he is the creator he has a uh, the energy and wisdom to bring anyone to himself if he wants. So what Jesus was trying to say at that time, he was talking to the people and saying, if you want to know about God, truly know of him, come to me. 
Right now, I'm the only one that's saying anything uh, proper and good and understandable about the true God. So that is what he's saying. He's not saying that he's the only one that can bring you to God. But he is saying that at that time, he's the only one in the land that is speaking up for God. He's the only one in the land that is telling the truth about God. That is, so listen to me. That is what he's trying to say. Listen to me. I will bring the truth of God to you. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. And how was he? Yes, thank you very much. But yes, you know, so many, so many Christian. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, Raziel. That's all right. I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. That's all right. Um, Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, what are the? Okay, a lot of people. It's either angels or aliens, or aliens and angels. Uh, what are? The, how are you working differently from the extraterrestrials with us? And does it matter if we? go to them for guidance or to you for guidance? Does it matter? If they are God-fearing angels, why not go to them? Listen to their truth. Let it resonate with you. And, and if it is not something that resonates truly with you, then come to us. I'm sure that we'll be able to straighten everything out that they're trying to say. It might just be a misunderstanding or something of that nature. But we can bring great truth to you if you are ready to hear it some people want great truth but when they hear it then they go well i don't get it i can't understand that so we bring great truth to those who are ready for it okay so you're both doing the same thing in different ways are you both doing the same thing in yes yeah okay thank you very much M many blessings Many blessings to you as well. I think there's a question in the room, Ian. Okay, that's great. Let's go ahead. I'm just curious. Will the ascension happen before Jesus arises, or will Jesus arrive arise before the ascension? I believe that uh, God only knows the answer to that <laughs> because I'm not sure. If, I think that they are happening simultaneously, but I have a feeling that Jesus will come back before the ascension takes everyone into the next realm. And then when he does come back, will we be able to have contact with the ETs physically? That is a good question. I, I don't think he really has, he's not coming back to do that, yeah. but it will help to facilitate it in some way. Did that make sense to everyone? Yes. All right. it, it, it was hard to understand her questions. Can you sort of clarify her she, questions? Please? Yes, she was very soft spoken. She asked if uh, Jesus will come back before the ascension happens, or is the ascension going to happen before Jesus goes back? And the second question was, um, what was the second part? Well, or will the ETs come at the oh, time? Will, the, will that, will, when Jesus comes back, will that sort of cause the, uh, the first contact sort of thing? And I'm sure that Jesus isn't coming back to do, to, for the purpose of first contact, but I'm sure that it will facilitate it in some ways. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Next, we have Don is going to ask a couple of more questions from our YouTube chat. And so far, that will conclude the end of the questions at this time. All right. And then I will bring someone else through. Thank you. Okay, Raziel, the, this next question is from Uri Udalman Shakula. And he asks, I have recently got a turquoise stone and a selenite crystal in my room. Can you tell me if the crystals are trying to give me any message? How do I use uh, them for energy clearing purposes? Thank you. Solonite is a healing material. So yes, it is trying to let you know that you, if there is any healing that is necessary 
for you. It, it is uh, use that stone, use that uh, solenite. The blue stone, I'm not sure what it is, but it is telling you that you are a communicator. It, it wants to, it has a message for you in communication. Is it something that you want to do for the future? Is it something that God is calling you to do? To be a communicator of some sort because the blue lines up with the the blue chakra the throat chakra and that has something to do why it was purchased because some way you resonated with it communication wise thank you okay the next question is for or from sorry from firstborn can you share your perspective on abortions Oh, my thought on abortion is this. All children have a right to live. All children have a right to live. I love all those that have been conceived, no matter how they were conceived. There was a reason for the conception. There was a reason for this person to uh, exist. There's a reason for all children to be born. That child that sometimes is aborted may be one of the great speakers of the earth, a great leader, a great someone that would have changed the earth in some way, but negativity destroyed them before they even had a chance to speak. Now I know there are many opinions about that, and women say, it's my body and I can do with it what I want. And that's true, you can. But do what's right with your body. Don't do what's wrong with your body. Listen to your conscience. Yes. If it's Thank going you. to kill you to have a child, perhaps the child should not be living then. Maybe. If there is a way to get around it, you should try. But if you just don't want it, give it to someone that does. If you just don't want it, give it to someone that does. There is someone out there that will love and guide and protect it. If it's because you're embarrassed to have the child out of wedlock or whatever, that was your error. Why should someone die for it? Why should someone die for your error? Yeah. All right. With that. I have Many one last questions. And that's the last of the questions, except we do have one other comment about the abortion, and that is when does the soul enter the body? Uh, does it become life after the first breath or sometime before? When you are conceived, it is a different life, just like a seed that you plant and becomes a flower. This is the smallest portion. When life starts, it is there. Does it have a soul? It is destined for a soul, yes. Is it in there already? It has life. Yes, there is the fire is starting to burn. Why should you take a seed and throw it away when you know that it's going to develop into a person? Thank you, Raziel. It's appreciated your presence here. Yes, now, I, I know that these are hard words for some people because some of you may have had abortions and it is forgiven my children all things are forgiven it's not that god holds this against you there are bridges to new life from every situation god loves you no matter what so this is not a condemnation i am not speaking in words of condemnation i am in speaking in words that I hope will bring a love and a heartfelt message to you that needs to be spoken. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. 
And we currently don't have any more questions at this time. Very well. Much love to you. And the angel blessing is this. May God richly breath bless all of you and rise you up if that is your purpose. May him fill you with his spirit. May he love you into a great new existence that you cannot even know until you find his trueness. Let him burn within you and light up your life with true love that you may not have ever felt before. Much love to you, and may he richly become part of each and every one of you. Thank Thanks you, Vesalius. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah, what well, you didn't give me much time to talk, did you? Yeah, well, that's all right, he was an angel, good for you, that's good. So, um, he has <laughs> wings, I wish I had wings, really. I, can you see him? Yeah, well, anyway, doesn't matter. Hi, I've come through and I have a message first. First of all, it's true that there's a lot of trouble in the Middle East and that there is very little that you can do to stop what is coming because no one will negotiate properly. I'm trying to get them to negotiate properly one with another, but they are very stubborn in this area of the world. They, they say, this is the way it is. I'm not changing for anybody. And then the other side says, this is the way it is. I'm not changing for anybody. And there's more than one religion or, or belief system that is following that. The Shiites, the Muslims, the Islams, the, you know, all the different, the Jewish people even and the Christians, all the people in the area believe that they are right and they will never change what they believe to give in to somebody else. And you know what? You gotta love each other no matter what. You have to love the other one, whether they you think they're right or wrong, but they have no capacity for that. They have no capacity for loving the one that, that isn't right. They want to kill the infidels or get rid of them or take them over or make them believe what they believe but they don't love they don't love they don't love anybody but themselves and the people around them that they care about they are not loving toward the other religions or other other belief systems and they have to love the world how are they going to do that if they can't just love somebody from another sect or religion. So this is a big problem. And pray for them that this love will, will come forth because it at this point, they are closed. The door is closed for communication. They do not talk, not properly. It's my way or it's my way. You're not listening to me. That's what they said. You're not listening to me. And I am not listening to you. But you have to listen to me. Even though I'm not listening to you. That's no way. To, it doesn't work that way. But that's the way they're trying to do it. All right. That's enough of that. Does anybody have any questions? We sure do. We have one question from Safira. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Grendel. Greetings. Yeah. 
<laughs> so about the Middle East, um, I was working there for um, a little bit on a peace mission, so to speak. Yes. This was organized by Sun Myung Moon, who was a Korean spiritual leader, yeah. who yeah. seemed to have a um, a parental effect on the two brothers, so to speak. And right. there were many right. Muslims and Israelis coming together under this wing, under this yeah. kind of parental love. They were forgiving each other and they were working together. So what is a good, what is a good mediator uh, for oh. to bring the brothers oh. together? Because yeah, uh, it, he did a good it must job. be a mediator. Uh, he's not there anymore and things have gotten much worse since then. Yes, there are yeah. those that were forgiving each other back then, but this is a new time. They are not doing it at this time. There's nobody over there trying to do that kind of peace making. Uh, there's nobody over there except they're trying to bring, the Christians are trying to uh, bring in their thought process, and they say they love everybody, but uh, not so much all the time. So it's a uh, they're probably doing better than some of the other sects with a uh, sect s-e-c-t-s -E because they do have that word love in their in their dialogue and um so others that are not feeling so much love are uh, attracted to that everybody will be attracted to love but they must truly feel it to be won over, and they must see the examples of it. Many people talk about love, and they, but they don't, they're not a good example of it. They'll 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 love the ones that agree with them, but they won't love the ones that are pushing against them. They'll they need to love them too. So right now, there is no real good influence in that area that is really bringing love because they're loving those that accept them, but they're not loving those that are pushing against them. So it is, it's not, they're praying for them, but they're not really loving them. And they have mm -hmm. to, they're loving them, they were praying for them, they have to love them too. So you have to yeah. keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. I have one other question about. Yeah, we need someone there, there. There's no question. Well, yeah, because I'm thinking there's, there's got to be a mediator for them, too, for the two brothers somewhere, somehow. I, I don't know. It seems like to be a spiritual solution more than a political. Be, if, you, if you read the Bible, the Antichrist will save everyone in that area, will bring everyone together. The Antichrist will. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, I have a question, please, about uh, something different. This is about the, um, are there going to be any upcoming government meetings? Because the, the Marines... through J July, uh, it starts on the 26th. Okay. June. Okay, so this situation with the Marines who are now being uh, suddenly allowed to say that they've seen extraterrestrials and the media is picking up on this, is this a false flag, or is this why the government meeting is taking place partly, or no, was it no. not planned for a long time? That has nothing to do with it. Okay. Right. And false flags. Be careful about false flags. Uh, you're the whole world is looking for false flags, and you know what? They're overlooking what really is happening. They're saying, "Oh, the government set that up." So they don't believe it really happened the way it happened. And that you're missing what the, the true state of the world is in. The true state of the world is a dangerous place. It's not a false flag. So what I mean is, um, is, is what happened now that the, that the main media is picking up on these marine pilots who saw the extraterrestrials and making That's it all over the world? Enough. Sorry? That's a good thing, don't you think? Uh, yes, uh, it just so many others have come forth in the past and it wasn't picked up on. But 
The question is, is this is the day and the age for it? They okay. need uh, it is time for these things to come forth. You have Great. your ancient alien program, you have many UFO books that are out there, you have many that are uh, speaking about disclosure in many different ways all over the world, greater than it's ever been. They have you, uh, the reality of ufos is being embraced they have they believe in ufos but they're a little hesitant about species they don't know what to think are they good are they bad are they demons like the church says or what are they they don't know and so that's so, what they trust okay so is this the beginning of true disclosure on the earth and is that a precursor yeah. for first contact Will first yeah. contact happen? Well, yeah. first contact's going to happen very differently than what they have said. They, they had to change their whole strategy. It's going to be that every television set in the world is going to come on and they're going to talk to them that way. Really? That will be how the aliens will speak to the world. I see. They will not venture to come into your realm with spaceships and be shot down they're not going to do it because somebody will do it and they realize that okay there's other questions um thank you very much grendel you're welcome Where? next we have do we have a question in the room yeah okay let's go ahead and do that first yeah did you hear my request for the help with my paperwork? Yes. Was it taken care of? Uh, it's not complete yet. Okay, will I be okay? You'll be okay. Okay. I think so, yeah. You think so? Yes, yeah, so far it's good. Okay. Okay? Just stop worrying about it. Stop worrying, yes. Okay. We'll do what we can. Thank you. All right, next. Okay, next we have Ava. Hi, yeah. Grindel. Um, Hi, baby. How you doing? I'm actually very good since um, March of, you know, there was intervention happening there. So now I'm actually much better. And I want you to know that I will ask to talk to you on Friday at 11.30 my time. So here's a right. Yeah. All right. And, I'll be there. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much. Well, but, my guy will be done working by then. So that's good. So, yeah. Yeah. That'll be 6.30 here in, in Israel, so he goes home at 5, so that's good. Okay, wonderful. Well, I have a question about Middle East and women, because there are yeah. lots of things. Do they do any peace work? Do they do have any influence? I know it's, it's women good. that are standing up more than the men for freedom and equality. They are doing a greater amount of work at this time than um, is that you're than anyone is aware of they're not put on the news in your country they are put on the news there but uh, I don't know why your world your part of the world doesn't want uh, anyone to see how courageous these women have been and how much they difference they've made yeah Okay, yeah. thank, you. thank you so much. That You're was welcome. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, the next question we have comes from Sheer. Yeah. Hey, Grindo. Yeah, Sheer, how's it going? Well, I'm entering my finals. So. Yeah, I know that. You're worried about those for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know that you have some influence. If it's possible to maybe change the results of my test, that would be more than appreciated. And Why are you afraid to fail? I don't think you're gonna. <laughs> there's uh, anyway. Much, there's too many energies around you. The problem with you is you get nervous when you take tests. You need a relaxation infusion just before you go there. And then you'll be going like, oh, this is a breeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm pretty calm when I'm starting the test, but until then, I'm a nerve wreck. Yeah, very good. We'll try to, we'll get all that information in you. You'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I want to ask you, um, Israel is going to a re-election, which is... Oh, yeah. The second one. 
Yeah, it's the first time that it's ever happened, and people are pretty much shocked that uh, Bibi Netanyahu wasn't able to build a coalition. And yeah. he, like, no one know what is that means and who's behind it and what and why. And there's many different theories. Do you have any uh, input on it? Like, who's behind it and why? There's a group of them. They're, they're all behind it. Let me put it this way. Uh, it goes right down through the uh, leadership positions that uh, this is something that had to happen. They had they had to have a second uh, re-election. Everyone was agreed on that because no one, there is, there is a lot of thought that has to go into this election. And many people are unsure of who to, what, who do elect right at this time? This is a very difficult election because whoever is in charge will have to be a very strong leader at this point. And they don't see that either one of these guys are going to be that what they want. So um, they're trying to even get a, somebody else in there. I'm not sure. But it's they're frightened that this will be the end of Israel if they get the wrong guy here. Uh, yeah, well, it's the same thing every election. <laughs> yes, but this one is a little more delicate. You you don't understand all the different things that are on the table uh, at this particular time for Israel. It's a very dangerous time. And if anybody makes a, a, a weak decision, it's, um, it's, going to, it's going to cost a lot for your people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to hear from you. It is thank nice you. to hear from you too. But I and I'm hoping they're hearing me in Israel because they need to understand that, that the right man has to be in that that chair, that office. It's it's a he has to be strong. There's some very very difficult decisions to make in the near future. Thank you. Yes. Hi, the next question we have is from Christine. Christine. Hi, Brindle. Greetings. Greetings and blessings to you. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if it has, um, if the energy around that entire area of the Mideast, if that has a lot to do, the energy in the, in the earth and everything, that there's so much... Um, turmoil going on over there i mean it seems it's been like, that way for a long time yes yes so it's kind of built into the earth if we um sent energy to the ground itself do you think that would help bubble up into the people that are living on uh, it and this is a this is the started by the 12 tribes of israel they all just they all separated and went their own ways and now they're all different kinds of belief systems that don't come together it had nothing to do with the earth really uh but i although the earth is disturbed at this time it is um earth, prone to earthquakes but not as much volcanoes but it is prone to earthquakes the thing is about that area is that it for as long for millennium, thousands of years, it's been these different religions against one another. And that is something, uh, and that is why the word jihad, religious war, holy war, whatever you want to call it, is in, is always happening in one way or another there. They're always calling jihad against one another because they're saying they're right. And so there's always bad feelings bubbling up all the time with their attitudes toward one another. I, they, they called a jihad on us. We're very upset about that. So we'll call a jihad on them. And, you know, it's, it's all negative. So they need to get a more positive thought process because they're all hurt by one another. And it's as they are still hurt, they're sending that hurt down through every generation. They're teaching their children about yes. that hurt 
and you're their children are going wow you hurt my dad and everything and now so now i'm hurt so i have to continue what he believes and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it goes down through the generations this way and as long as it does that nothing will change i i think um energy to the people that's who needs it okay well mother earth needs it too but the people need it worse yeah yeah i'm i'm thinking of not just the children that are there i mean we're we're yeah. bombarded with pictures of children that are all bones and yes, um, there, there's not a lot of food in some of the areas there are other it, areas that are fine but the food is like i said people are very selfish there it's it's my family my family it's all about me <laughs> that's how they've been taught that's how it's done that's where it goes what i'm worried about is that within the united states there's areas where we have children who um are lacking too well yes and it's sad because some of those areas are very opulent meaning that there's a lot of wealthy people in that area but yet there's thousands of children starving nobody's even paying attention no yes it happens all over the world but no it's because everybody's paying attention to their own little space their own little piece of world and they're not really giving out to the world that's why these people that are building the schools doing the loving work for people that out of the goodness of their heart are changing the world in some ways because that's a beautiful example of love no matter what they believe others will believe in them as a good and kind person and they'll find out what they believe as far as their belief systems because whatever it is they want that I sometimes um, sometimes I need reassurance that my sending um, love to the Indian reservations here in America or yes. to um, the um, southern states, which are so embedded in this hate. But I'm sure that it's not really all there. You know, I'm sure that there are good well, things there are that are happening. Very too. loving people everywhere in the world, in every state. In every, but there are those that they say they hate sin but they're hating people. They're yes. hating people that have that sin. They'll say, I don't hate you, I hate your sin, but then they'll punish the person. They will hate the person and not have them allowed to be near them. That or is wrong. Or hate the result. The person and sending them away. Yeah. Instead of letting them come in and learn about love of God, the churches will send away the people that are undesirable. That's the hate. Poor. The poor. Yeah. Okay. Wherever, it, it, didn't God go and, I Jesus go and live with the sinners for a while? That's what some of these people need to do. They need to go and find the sinners and love them for who they are and instead bring of, God to them. Instead of bring using God. their private jets. Yes. So they don't have to be. Yeah. With right. the jets. yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Grendel. Yeah, give me a fly, private jet while you're at it, you know. I need one. <laughs> yeah hello right. Rindle, this is dawn blessings yeah yes okay our next question is in the uh, youtube chat it is from curious light and her question is is there any news about site to site travel site to site you mean from the gurkvik near group i don't um, know where she means what i know about it um they're working on a plan for medical people to be taken from the earth and brought to the ships site to site 
if, if that's what you're talking about. They're working on a plan, the aliens are, the many different factions of them, are working on getting just the first step of uh, people leaving your world would be having severe medical cases come and have them be cured and healed. But at this point, only the government officials want their families to go and have this done, which is not fair. And so the aliens will not give them that uh, medical assistance until they agree that others, other than just their family, people in the society that they know are very sick can have this work done as well. And so they're working on that for first, for first site to site. And um, that, if that is agreed upon, that could possibly open up a greater site to site, um, a, a, you know, um, program. Let's put it that way. Thank you. Okay, right. my, my one more question, uh, yeah. and we'll move on. This is from Sandra Anaclito. Yeah. Uh, would Grindle tell me, I'm sorry, would Grindle be able to help me with my writing block? I need to publish a paper, and I'm having a hard time getting the paper done, although the study has been completed. Correct. Um, you're getting in your own way. When people have writer's block, they're doing nothing but standing in their own way. They have the answer to it. They, they know what to do. Really, they do. They just are saying, I'm not sure I want to do it this way. They have other thoughts. They have too many thoughts about how to do this, and they're standing in their own way. Does that make sense to you? That's yes. what the block is. You're standing in your own way. Get out of your way. Just say, this has to be done. Let's do it. Write down the different ways that you are thinking about that this should be done. The first sentence, whatever. Write down some reasons why you think you have this block. And then look at all those reasons. You're standing in your own way. That's what you're going to find. You're going to find, oh, all these reasons, something standing in my way. Is it my mother, my boss, thinking about my mother, doing this, whatever it is. I have to do, do this and that and the other thing. I don't have time for it. You make time for it. You're standing in your own way. That's what a block is. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay, we have one last question so far that's on the books, and that is coming from Safira. Yeah. Hello again, Grendel. Yeah. So I just had two implants removed, both reptilian. And so I don't know what race of reptilian, another friend of mine in England, um, you know her. Uh, she's also, uh, her and her children are also always getting reptilian implants. Uh, are these which races are doing this and can I please get your ongoing protection uh, uh, against them? Dimensional yes. beings should be protecting everyone. <coughs> I don't know how these reptilians are getting in except by very high technology. They're opening portholes right by you and then putting the implant in and then escaping through the same porthole because around the planet, there is protection. So these reptilians are on that on your planet. That is what I do know. So they have to be, uh, you have to be protected in your own realm. And so the seventh dimensional beings, I'm going to ask to uh, do some protection over some of the humans that are getting a lot of uh, these implants because they're done from your own realm. Okay, may I please be on that list <laughs> because uh, apparently, these implants were affecting my fourth dimensional energy, which means that yeah, I didn't they have any. Nothing. Now, yes. what species are they? There are several species of reptilian that are on your world. You gotta 
got to understand they sneak in before they snuck in before the governmental rules were put in into place there's a lot of a lot of different things going on with the government uh, galactic government now because they see that all these beings are on your planet they're not supposed to be but they're there so mm -hmm. how are they going to get rid of them they have the men in black who weren't running around doing stuff but there's not enough of them to to take care of this problem so um there's just a lot of uh turmoil going on within the uh governments of the galaxy right now so you might see some changes in the near future hopefully they will take action against them but they have not done so so far because they don't know how they got there were they there before the galactic government put up these rules and if mm -hmm. so that's sort of a loophole mm. they didn't come to your planet after the rules were made they were there before they were made so mm. they have to work on that okay can may I, um did you hear my question if i can be put on that list for protection yes <laughs> absolutely okay thank you very much there's a question in the room does jim need some water yes take some water here all right good for jim super all right good there's a question over here i just hi grand hills farmer hi hey i'm curious as to like you're talking about israel now, what about those children that are being born that are like crystal children, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Can they help change that situation? They're changing the world little by little. So what about Israel, that area? There's crystal children being born there as well. But the thing is, they're being taught. They're being taught differently instead of being able to be free in, in being who they are. They're being put in a mold. And so... And there's a lot of crystal children that are in mo that mold of hatred that that is over there, but they hopefully some of them will be able to get out of that. Okay, yeah. Too. Yeah. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, we have one more question from the chat room, um, and Don will go ahead and ask that. Yes. The, yes. This last question is from Ecclesiastic eight eight eight. If there's room for one more question, would you kindly ask uh, when the black crystal, the black diamond he has in brackets, uh, that is stored in the inner earth, will it be released to the masses? Thank you. It is, uh, there is a black diamond, that is truth. It is very hidden at this time and not accessible. The time for it to be released will not be yet. It will not be released to this generation for sure, but it it does have a purpose in future generations because let me explain. There are many people that will be leaving the earth for Terra Ha at some point, and they will be leaving behind third dimensional people that will still be here on this planet. The black diamond is actually for them to learn how to change their ways and develop into fourth dimensional beings the black diamond will come after this after those that are in going to terra ha has left does that make sense to you yes it does thank you very much good okay that's it makes sense to him i was wondering if it made sense to the person that asked the question but perhaps that i can't find that out yet um it seems like we're we have about 10 minutes remaining i don't know yeah. if you wanted to make a statement or if we just wanted to go ahead and go into blessings yeah do your blessings because i made my statement at the beginning uh there's no more statements to make for me I, I what, well there's a question here hold on okay you were talking about site to site and that um it it's still in the process yeah where are they in their negotiations is it really is it getting closer 
Yeah. Well, it's all up to your people because your people have set the rules for this planet. And the galactic government has to obey the rules that you have set for yourself. Your political government has set rules for this world. Right. So they have to enforce those rules because you are not part of this outer neighborhood. The You're not part of the exopolitics. You only have your own. Now, if they would decide to have site to site, the galactic government would have to change a law so that it it is lawful to do that before it could even happen because if they would have to get with your people and say did you actually want this to happen is this something that we have to discuss in the galactic uh, realm because in order to do that they have to change the law what i see so far from all governments all around the world is that when they see that they're in government power they see that they are separate from the people and so once they decide that they are like the people that this will happen yeah maybe do you understand what i'm saying yeah i'm saying yeah they're separated from the people by power and money right the people to them in most cases they have to care about <clears throat> not that they want to care about them, but they have to. Otherwise, they will lose their power and money. So in order to get them to actually <coughs> care about what is going on between exopolitics and government politics, is there has to be some caring going on. That's not going on right now. So you're, how are you going to change their minds? How are you going to bring love into these people that have been through so much and will do wrong things to stay in power that really takes, you know, that that ruins them for real love. They're now they're now jaded, they're now they don't care. They feel like they you know, inside they're guilty. So they they need to be feeling good about themselves in order to help the people properly in order to do the right things so pray for your government officials that they are that they find their true selves because they're that's not who they are that's truly not who they are do you understand that that government officials are really ruined they ruin themselves Oh, one. All right. I mean, that's, that's all. All right. Now, all right. A question. a question again here. My question is back to the reptilians on the planet. Now, my understanding is dead, and some of them have permission to be on here. Is that permission just from the galactic part, or is it from the government and the galactic part? It would have, humans would have to have given them permission. Okay. Humans would have to, if there's the ones that have permission to be here, it would have to be humans that gave them the permission, not anyone else. That's it. I have a question. Yes. Someone is wondering, and so am I. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, by the way. But what this lady wants to know is, who are the Mayu or Mayu? Mayu. Now there's several different pronunciations. Yes. Is this a group of aliens? And what? Yes, it is. And where where are you hearing about them? Where are you Ask. hearing? It is on a hip. Oh, ship in this person's dream. Ah, Mayu might. My you may be hearing the name wrong. I think that you're hearing the Mayans because the Mayans are in charge of the Ascension right now. So okay. Mayu, it sounds very similar. The Mayans are Pleiadians that are in charge of the Ascension at this time. Mayu might be the name of a person on that ship, 
But I believe you're seeing the Mayans. The ship is the Mayans. Is that correct? <clears throat> Let's see. Go ahead and write your response if yeah. you wish. Iakata. Yeah. And as we wait, I'd like to remind people that we are looking for closing blessings. So just let me know and I'll put you in the queue. All right. Yes. Okay. It was. Yes. Kind of human life. Yes. All right. And thank you. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. Blessings. I'm going to go and the lit gym come back and you can and do some blessings. I love you all. Don't tell anybody. Um. Especially Much more, Thank you. If they hear about my planet, I'll get teased. So, <laughs> all right. At least they won't lock me up like they used to. So, anyway. All right. Much love. love. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. No, no kisses. <laughs> no kisses. All right. No, I, you know, I, my tongue's way too big. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, Hello? Welcome back. Hello, Jim. Welcome, Welcome. back. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Great, great job again, Jim. It's beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. They did all the work. They did all the work. <laughs> we were just gonna. We're right on time, right on schedule, actually. And we were looking to do some blessings. And I have a blessing um, that uh, Safira wants to do, and okay. was asking wanted to ask there were any other volunteers such as maybe from wendy or from david if they wanted to do a blessing too wendy's indicates i'll be happy yes, to okay great okay, good. Um, Did you want okay. To do I'll, I'll do a blessing too and okay. wants to do one okay okay well let's start with safira thank you <clears throat> Tio loho, ia shiku yo, ia kihi shili yo. There are great lights from the distance that shine on you and uplift you and will be a blessing in the future. Let us be a part of who you are and what you are doing. We are here to support the Ascension. Okay, David, you're next, and then Wendy. I'll, I'll let Wendy go first. I, I got to set an intention. Thank you. Wendy? Misalia ima shotoli hama kala awasata ki abaka ki. Se maya tasha kili ana malikora ko abala se tasha liza bajano ko la kizeze. Zimbaga janda bia luzo baga jana ki alako teri ki kia se intari ka pa sumala malikote ya aishia ta ki la jamariara le kia sa sala kamaliaso ma kia shote. All our energies are focused on you, and God is looking your way we see the great relevance of all the things that are happening in this day and age and how they can change things for the better although it is a mystery to you how this could be done but this is the way of god to show things through adversity at times and to make things different so that you may understand and learn that all things are possible. Believe and understand that your faith will make you whole as well. All right. Good. Wow, well, thank you, Jim. Okay, David, are you ready yet? 
Or how about we? Yeah. Okay, yes. great. Kelia had to kuno so he shikila namate, ukuno huale shikia, so who hush kuno hatar, kukuno hete, eskamate in a tua shikilema atana way to kushuk kin, a wahatale he shoe, eskamahala ete kila ma ato hasu he shiki, kuna hatale mehetoa shikilene eto. Simala ata shikiki na atola hashi shishiku no otale shua na otunehi kila mahata he shue kukua. Much love, peace, oneness. Let the intentions of your heart come forth. Let them be known to all, because that is the way that you will find healing, love, understanding, goodness, and kindness, compassion. And the things that are of you that are truly part of you. Let these things be a part of the world that you live in as well. Send out your healing, your love, your compassion, your goodness to all places that are needed. The world is in a state of need beyond what it ever, ever has been before. And so this is the time for you to react and be a part of the solution. That was beautiful. How about in the room? We have a blessing. Yes, Angie. Shukuriatani. <laughs> Yavoni, Amanatoku, Asasano do Tutushi, Marataka, Yaratoku, Ani, Atatakush, Yaratoku, Ani, and Yokoa, Isisi, Ananaga. There is great movement and alignment in the stars, and you can see them if you wish, but some people are feeling them more than witnessing them. Let them pull you toward the decisions that are part of your future. Let your way and mission be enveloped by the energies that the universe and God set out just for you. Now you may say, if there is all these energies, how are they to come just to me? But that is the, the miracle of it all, is that they are for many, but individualized as well in your own part of the matrix. Okay, great. That concludes our blessings for today. I'd like to thank you for everyone for joining us. Uh, join us next Saturday. Karen, can you pipe in on who's going to be our guest? She may be laying down. Yeah, she may, she may be. <laughs> I don't know who next week's guests are going to be. Huh? Well, keep an eye out, out on uh, hookalaw.org, and, and it's uh, the, the guests are posted there for anybody. I, uh, me again next week. I think I'm here again next week, and then I'll be away in uh, Canada in, on the 21st. So I think I'm again. I'm here again next week. Okay. So, and I just want to say too, on on Jim's behalf too, um, that maybe we don't. Uh, um, say it often enough, but thank you, Jim, for everything that you do for us. This is beyond amazing. And I want to remind everybody, if you have private questions, please contact Jim through hookalo.org for a private channeling session. He's amazing. That is very, very, that is very, very true. This is how he makes his living, you guys. This is yeah. how he makes his living. So please, yeah, yeah. please consider not, that. Not by the webinar, but by his private sessions. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, not by the webinar. <laughs> okay, um, much one love last, to all of you. Go ahead. One last thing I wanted to mention was um, the Keepers of the Codes. It's a new group that Max has started, and it's for those who are interested in light language, whether you're 
uh, can speak light language or you want to learn light language. For beginners, there's a class every third or every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And for those who can speak light language, where it's nothing but light language is pretty much spoke, is on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And you can find all the information on Facebook under Keeper of the Codes. Um, ask to join that group and you can get tuned into all the information. Excellent. I just want to remind people about the uh, Heart and Solstice that's coming up in Canada. Uh, get in touch with Micheline if you want to go. I guess she has a couple openings. There was a couple cancellations. It was sold out at one time. And uh, so now she needs a couple more because there was some cancellations. So I'll get in touch with her. And uh, I know the uh, private uh, private uh, paneling sessions are sold out there. I can't take any more of those. But um, uh, it will be a really great time. I'm really looking forward to it. Also, the um, fourth uh, Ascension Workshop in August from the 8th to the 12th. I really, I know that some of you want to come. It's Five hundred seventy-five dollars for all for the weekend and uh, the five, the five, four days. There's lots of classes. Your meals will be taken care of. At least lunch and dinner. You're on your own for breakfast, though. Uh, but there's so many other things there. There's swimming pool. There's a pool table. There's a bar. There's uh, there's many things there. So it's really nice. Sounds like you can have a rip roaring time outside the channeling sessions. <laughs> yes, I think that it's going to be a really good fellowship time. Um, I think that whenever we come together, we all we all have such a good time together. It's all it's a, it's a lot of fun. We all there's like no drama. It's so good. The last one it was no drama whatsoever. It was really wonderful. So it was amazing. Great. So hopefully Karen's back so she can end the YouTube session so we can go off air. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody wants to join me on Wednesdays with uh, Wednesdays with Wendy, um, we're also I also do an open light language uh, live YouTube uh, at Google Hangout for anyone who wants to come and participate and share your own light languages, discuss how uh, we use them in our daily life and um you know just uh and also if you're in need of some healing um if you don't speak them and want to speak them um yeah it's it, as we're seeing light languages are just blooming so all are welcome uh and you can find the information on uh, languages of lights.com okay very good thank you any other announcements your book while oh. we're waiting your I book. I can just say there's there's the book, and then we can also say uh, I host the weekly channeling class called Hucula's Weekly Channeling, and we host that every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Good, good. That, can, that can be um, found also on Facebook under Hucula Channeling Practice Group. And all are welcome. It's free to join. Just join the Facebook page. Yes, in the book, you can buy that as a present for all your strange friends. So, <laughs> so they'll love it. So let them know how strange you are. Yeah, let them know how strange we are. But no, um, the book is done actually pretty well. So I was really happy with the results. But it's still selling a little bit. So go on and get your copy of the book if you don't have one now. And um, the audio version is wonderful. Good. And uh, it's called From the Galaxy with Love. Sounds like uh, a motion picture, but that's coming later. No. <laughs> Let me All see right. if I can ping Karen to see if we can get off live. <laughs> All right. Much love to you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Blessings.